Hey guys, JD here. I must not have gotten out my sermon today. Everything I wanted to say, I don't know, because I was in the mood to do videos. And I did one for Josh Bice that I hope, I hope that he reads or rather watches. Because um, I feel like he's probably hurting right now. And I've been there. I've hurt before. I hope he doesn't stay hurt. Um, so... As most of my listeners know, for the last six months, I've been speaking like five days a week, six days a week, seven days a week, to the point that last week or the week before my church was like, you got to take a break. Um, so, you know, you got to have a sabbatical once a week for my own health, and uh, which is wise advice. If it's not Sunday, it's got to be a man, a man is made to take a break, so I don't know if you can see them here, but I'm at my house, and you can see my children. Uh, there's my lunch. It's a great Sunday lunch. Where'd they go? Smile, guys. Hello, 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 Wave Piper. I think they can see you. I don't know. Um, so I have five kids, and let me explain to you what I did just this week. Um, we formed a John Birch Society on Monday night. Um, Tuesday night, I worked on our Lincoln Reagan Day dinner to get Congressman Rosendale, Austin Knutson, the Attorney General, and Sheriff Richard Mack um, communicated with them to get them up. Uh, did a podcast or a webcast with David. Also, uh, a news show. Did a news show with uh, Montana Gazette Radio that I don't ordinarily do, uh, although I'm about to take that over now. Um, and then Wednesday, traveled to Billings, uh, which is a four-hour drive, and visited three people in the hospital, and made you know pastoral visits at the hospital. Then I drove uh, another two hours to spend the night in Bozeman. Drove through a blizzard to make it to the U.S. Capitol Rally, where, excuse me, the Montana Capitol Rally, uh, called the People's House Rally, that I started and organized and founded um, to um, petition God that he would bless our capital at the start of the year. Um, seems like it would be better done in April and avoid the blizzards, but hindsight's 2020. But it was the start of the year, so that was nice. We had a time of uh, silence, uh, or prayer rather, not silence, uh, for uh, Ashley Babbitt, who was murdered by the, uh, by the Capitol Police at the January 6th massacre. And uh, in Montana, they let us into the house because it was cold. And I said, that's all he wanted to begin with, and preached a sermon that you can find online in various places, and then drove home. Uh, yesterday, I dealt with about... Well, 20 fires to put out and a sermon, church. That's what my week consisted of. I'm tired at the moment, in case you can't tell. The question is, and by the way, that's a very slow week. Like, there's, that's a slow week for me. Um, I mean, that's preaching two or three times instead of seven. And that takes the life out of you. And there's a reason I'm 40 and I look like I'm going on 55. The question is, how do you get it all done? And the answer is, your children have to be assets, not liabilities. Kids are assets, not liabilities. So uh, Monday night, my kids were there. Tuesday night, my kids were there. Wednesday night, uh, they weren't traveling with me or Thursday. Then I come home and I see them Friday. Um, see them Saturday, see them on Sunday, but we don't do basketball. We don't do organized sports, no organized sports in my household. Um, we, we don't do t-ball, um, uh, because my kids are not going to be, uh, major league baseball players. We don't do soccer because they're not going to be soccer players. Um, we don't do basketball because they're not going to be basketball players. Um, I wish my daughter would have done debate, didn't do debate. Um, they don't play instruments because they don't have the acumen for it. 
except for maybe one, and she does dabble a little bit. And there's a wonderful church lady that shows her how to dabble. Um, she did a great job, by the way, at our Christmas program. Um, we have almost zero extra extracurricular activities for the kids. They are homeschool children who hang out with their parents and each other. And they're very well socialized. You'd never know that they're not public school kids, except they don't act like public school kids immorally. Um, the key to being a highly efficient, successful human being, first of all, in 21st century America, is that you have to make time. You can't find time. Guys, you can't find time. They don't make any more time to find. It's not like mining for Bitcoin. Oh, I found some time. You make time. There's not enough time for my children to be the center of my life. There's not enough time for my children, for my life to revolve around my kids. My kids' lives revolve around me. So God shows a wife as a helpmate for her to help me. My children exist to help me. My children exist to help their mother. In 21st century America, we've sent the message that kids exist to help their mom and, excuse me, that kids are the center of the family's existence. That children are what the world's all about. That the world revolves around children. And you see this from kindergarten graduation, which is stupid, all the way up to high school prom, to where they're walking the red carpet and taking limousines to graduation where it, it, it's accomplished for most, for most kids. It means they accomplished little more than they showed up to school to be babysat for 18 years. Um, uh, our children, I mean, they have Christmas concerts at, at their private school and, and they, you know, we do those basic stuff. But the reason when I look around say my community and I say why aren't there more people at a John Birch meeting? Why aren't there more people at a Republican meeting? Why aren't there more people at a civics meeting? Why aren't there more people being salt and light in the earth? The answer is most of the time for a lot of good people I mean there's a lot of rotten people that will never be salt and light but there's a lot of good people who say well we've got a ball game that night. Why? Why do you have a ball game? What, what do you think sports is teaching your kids? And it doesn't help that there are a lot of pastors who are out there playing fantasy baseball instead of making a difference in the world. Um, so my advice to you is um, other than make sure that your children know they serve to exist the clan, cap, uh, cap, like lowercase c, not capital K. They serve the cl the clan, the family. They're there to help the family's mission. The family's mission is not to give the child all kinds of opportunities that they can go out later on in life and achieve on their own. So if, if I want to do something extracurricular, like hunting, I'll do that. And I'll take my kids with me. My hobbies will become their hobbies. Um... We're, we're not sending them to space camp. We don't even send them to church camp. And a lot of people watching this video are like, wow, you're a bad dad because your life doesn't revolve around your kids. It's because my life revolves around the mission God has given me that I'm able to do what it is that I do. And I don't believe in my heart that my children are going to hold it against me. And say, yeah, I missed out on some t-ball and some stupid things that we feel like as Americans we have to do. I didn't do Little League. I didn't do volleyball. I didn't do this or that. They're going to grow up knowing that they serve a greater purpose than throwing around a dead pig. And I'd pray that you would teach your kids that they have a purpose that is greater than throwing around a dead pig. So they can, they can grow up and watch on the boob tube people throw around a dead pig. So if you're a Christian man that wants to make a difference in the world, you don't have time for an Xbox. If you're a grown man, you don't have time to watch sports. Grow the crap up. You should be making a difference in the world with every spare moment of time that you possibly can find. And 
if you live past 40 doing it, uh, it's got to be God's providence. Wear yourself out for Jesus. Be a good steward of what he's given you, his body. Um, you're a temple of God. Take care of yourself. Do self-care. But your children, if they're the center of your life, Jesus isn't. My kids know that what I do that may come off as to some neglectful of them is to serve a Christ that I love more than them. I love them more than all of my other children. Him. Christ. And oddly enough, some people don't even go to church because they want to have family time, which I think is like the best family time you can possibly imagine. That's family time, going to church together. So um, maybe restructure and reorganize your life where the quiver full of arrows that you have are weapons in your arsenal that you're training in the way that they ought to go, not giving them unlimited recess and playtime. And when you educate them, at home, that takes a few hours a day, not eight hours a day of babysitting. And that frees you up as a man of God to do what it is that you think you need to do. And if it's not my calling, like activism, if it's doing electrical work, guess what? You have free employees now. If it's working on a farm, you have free labor. Everything's backwards. The world says the world revolves around Family revolves around children. In God's economy, the children and what they do and how they spend their time revolve around the family unit, which has a singular purpose from God to take dominion over the earth, to spread out over it, and to subdue it. Yeah. Parental advice from a guy who has a gaggle of kids and lives the lives of five men and is able to do it because kids aren't the center of my existence Jesus is and that's an important lesson for them to learn you're not the be all and end all of your parents existence you are accoutrements to what God would have him accomplish and when you turn of age you have a mission too Make babies and enlist them in God's army. Sully Deo Gloria. God bless.